This mutation is called World on Fire, and uh, Viridia Prime is on fire, literally and metaphorically, and uh, it'll be under fire soon. So as you can see, we have three mutators active. We have Missile Command, Going Nuclear, and uh, the Pure Fire Beam. So uh, Going Nuclear is not one of my favorite mutators. I find it to be really, really spammy. There are nukes all over the place. And it's going to be giving Sukov a very, very hard time because it's infested. They're going to have uh, a lot of difficulty navigating around the map without getting smoked by a nuke. Uh, Missile Command is one of the uh, scarier mutators as well. As time progresses, uh, it can get really, really nasty. But uh, Sukov has a really good counter for it. Uh, in fact, probably better than Kerrigan. Uh, Sukov's bunkers are... Uh, are hit scan, which means that they do not get their their, their attacks do not get uh, shot down by the defensive drones that will accompany some of the missiles. So uh, Sukov can actually put bunkers around the map and uh, deal with the nukes and uh, the other missiles as well. So uh, Sukov is kind of favored uh, for that mutator. And lastly, we have the pure fire beam. And as long as you're paying attention and not really getting aggroed by that pure fire beam and not leaving your army to sit in the middle of the beer fire beam. I think uh, for the most part it'll be okay. But mostly uh, Missile Command and going nuclear are going to be the more difficult ones. So we have already a bunker coming down here for Sukov. Sukov realizes that uh, this is a necessity. So having these bunkers spread around the map is going to be very, very useful. We're going to see what Kerrigan's plan is, but if Sukov decides to uh, go ahead and just... Uh, lock down the entire enemy, uh, the entire allied base with uh, with his bunker is it would actually not be a bad strategy here. So uh, we'll see what Sukov's plan is. Um, production wise, Kerrigan is basically going up for a lair, so she's probably going to try and get the, uh, try and rush the Kerrigan upgrades here. Spawning pool is already at about 65% uh, HP, it has taken a lot of damage, and uh, Kerrigan will probably want to have some kind of defense uh, to deal with uh, with these missiles, this one queen is you know it, it's, queen is okay, but uh, eventually the queen is going to get overwhelmed by the number of missiles that are being spawned. You need to actually have some stack defenses down, and you can see here Stukov is also putting down more bunkers. So the more bunkers on the map, the better. And uh, you know Stukov is not really wasting anything by putting bunkers down because that's generally what his build is supposed to be—just mass bunker. So only thing that Stukov is required to do now is put the bunkers uh, and just spread them around the map more than you normally would. The Kerrigan is here on this side, and uh, there is an attack wave that has spawned. So Kerrigan will go and engage that. We have a bunch of adepts that have spawned, so that'll be okay. The characters will also have to be careful because these nukes are being detonated around the map and uh, can end up smoking Kerrigan, if you see what I mean here. Kerrigan almost walks into that nuke, that's somewhat unfortunate there uh, in terms of the uh, the timing of the nuke. It would have been uh, it would have been an interesting learning opportunity there for Kerrigan to always watch the map lest you choose to get nuked. Evolution. We do have one crystal that is still over here. I think that I think that crystal was not the one that started. Uh, I don't think it's the first crystal spawn. I think an SCV ended up getting killed there. Yeah, so an SCV ended up getting killed by uh, by that nuke on that side. So Apocalypse has been dropped here to to clear this expansion, which is good. The uh, Oculus is very, very useful here, and you can see a bunch of bunkers now for Stukov, which is uh, nice. We have a spore crawler here to help Kerrigan deal with the missiles. Spore crawler is fine, but its attack is a projectile attack, which means that point defense missiles can shoot down the projectiles and uh, Kerrigan can still get nuked. So Stukov will probably want to put some bunkers around there and uh, handle the missiles himself. You have two bunkers here. One, two more over here on this side. So you can see here, Sukov is uh, is very, very okay with dealing with this. We, we have already a nice one that has come down to, to help. I think this queen's probably going to get lifted by uh, the phoenixes if the phoenixes start to aggro that. Like the phoenix did not actually notice that. That's okay. But this phoenix does end up lifting up this random infested unit, which is also kind of funny. Infested is not the uh, the phoenix is not really doing any damage. Evolution. His nukes are really terrifyingly close to the player's expansions too. Gotta be really, really careful. 
Okay, so we have another two spore crawlers coming down here for Kerrigan. Again, spore crawlers are fine, they can't deal with most of the missiles, but once the nukes start getting launched around the map, uh, you will want to have, you know, bunkers, two cows bunkers to deal with them, or intercept them with your own army, because uh, these point defense, the, the, uh, the mukes are actually surrounded by, I think, five point defense missiles, and these things have a lot of energy, and they can absorb a lot of uh, missiles, and uh, usually what can happen is you will end up getting nuked if uh, you are using, you know, three spore crawlers, so this will be kind of interesting to watch, see how they choose to transition Revolution. into the game. Production wise, uh, we are just going for missile attacks here for Kerrigan. So Kerrigan is going for a Hydralisk build with Nice Worms, a uh, decent build here for Kerrigan. It does uh, allow for a lot of DPS and uh, a good, good amount of burst damage as well. Kerrigan has gotten all her three upgrades, so that's really good as well for Kerrigan. Uh, having a strong hero unit is very uh, beneficial in, in the early stages of the game. Just having a max out Kerrigan can make the mission a little bit easier while you start to transition up to your uh, higher tech units and massing up an army. The Pure Fire Beam has aggroed this nice worm and there's an attack right now that is here as well. Uh, we are dealing with a Skytoss Tempest composition, so there are a lot of phoenixes here. Um, unfortunately, Amon's army does not get hit by the nukes, which is uh, highly unfortunate. We have a ton of bunkers here, so they should have no problems dealing with the phoenixes. And we have a bunch of adepts. Simulation Ore comes down here for Kerrigan as well, just to try and get a little bit of value out of these uh, these phoenixes. Bokkalusk also comes down and ends up killing a lot of the phoenixes here. That's a good amount of resources that were dropped there. Uh, I think the Apocalypse was maybe somewhat wasteful. Um, Kerrigan should probably have moved behind the bunker line before triggering the assimilation aura. Just get these phoenixes to, you know, die to the uh, to these bunkers. And now we have a second pure fire beam that has spawned at the 10 minute mark. So uh, now there will be two pure fire beams on the map and both will be chasing the uh, allied uh, units around here. But the apocalypse gets directed into this island here, which is also really good. Just uh, dealing extra damage and you know, getting the most amount of value for, uh, for your cooldown. Very, very important for efficient gameplay. Phoenix gets shot down there. And this island has been essentially cleared up now. You can see now also what's happening is the concentration of missiles is going up. So you have the standard missiles here. It's going to be kind of difficult to see, but I want to show you some of these splitter missiles uh, that uh, do end up spawning as well. Um, and this is why having uh, your static defense is set up properly, there we go. So that one's a splitter missile, as soon as it dies it does uh, deal guaranteed amounts of damage. It deals unblockable damage, so uh, those splitter missiles are also really really annoying. And you can see these four crawlers and the queen is almost dead. Those are the point defense missiles over there as well, which... Uh, you can see that Stukov's infested, as, it was, as this thing was going past the infested, the infested were able to kill it off. Uh, it is not able to block uh, the infested uh, attacks, but it can block the, uh, the spore crawler attacks. So this uh, entire part of Stukov's army is just going to get nuked over there. Uh, that goes down. There's a little bit of uh, harass over here, but it, ha it stands no match against Kerrigan. You can see over here, Kerrigan is going to start struggling against these missiles. Uh, she will need to have a lot more bunkers coming out. The Sukov is making a few barracks there to help him push. Uh, he has basically locked down his base. His base is perfectly okay against this side. Uh, but the spore crawlers and uh, the one queen in Kerrigan's bases is not enough to uh, to handle that. Sukov has also not taken his expansion over here. I don't think Sukov is interested in. Uh, taking uh, an expansion, which, um, to be honest, I don't see why he would not want to. Uh, Stukov is relatively safe with his bunkers and uh, should have no problems dealing with uh, any of the missiles. And the, over here as well, those are way too many bunkers to deal with any phase of the mission when it comes to the missile command mutator. So you could probably move half of these bunkers to fortify his own base here. And the only advantage of not having taken this expansion is he does not get harassed by these uh, airdrops. Air compositions always end up harassing this base because they tend to just uh, graze the side of this mineral line, so they end up aggroing your SCVs or any worker that you have there, which does get kind of annoying, but uh, yeah. That queen almost goes down actually, has 11 HP left. 
that is the hero queen. She is alive, and now we have the Spear of Fire Beam that wants to try and get to Kerrigan. So the Spear of Fire Beam will stay away from the mineral line to a certain extent. Nuke comes down here, Kerrigan noses the nuke and uh, dodges that. Three more crystal drops now. Uh, Stukov has rallied his army towards the uh, northern one. Over here there should be a small harass, uh, a harass drop here, but again, tons of hydralists on this side. And uh, they clean up that side relatively well. Nuke, Nuke comes down, but uh, ends up uh, being spotted by Kerrigan, so that is good. Uh, there is a small harass drop here. Nuke comes down, nukes some of the uh, infested. Kerrigan drops a nice worm now, and uh, 15 minute mark has hit, and now we have the nukes that will be launched on the map, and it looks like it is going towards Kerrigan's base. So we're gonna keep an eye out on that, we'll see where this thing lands. Actually, that might be headed towards Yukov's space, which would be kind of convenient, because if that nuke hits, if that nuke goes towards Kerrigan's space, uh, it will end up nuking her, and she will lose a lot of structures. Okay, it does look like it's going towards Kerrigan's base, so uh, we are going to keep an eye on that little marker over there. Just watch Kerrigan just clear up the site. The site has been cleared, and um, there we go. So this nuke is making his way. See these point defense missiles? These point defense missiles will... Uh, okay, there are bunkers here for Stukov. Really, really good play, but that nuke is probably going to hit. And there is a nuke over there. Just take out the nice worm for Kerrigan, which is devastating over there. And that queen. And I think it took out a bunch of spore crawlers as well. But you can see these bunkers can take out the nuke. Um, the spore crawlers cannot. So Stukov should be moving some of these bunkers over here to help uh, guard his allies' base. But there we go, that is one nuke. Second nuke seems to be going towards Stukov's base now, I think. Trajectory is kind of awkward. But uh, if it is going towards Stukov's base, or if it is going to go over Stukov's bunkers, uh, he will be okay and will not have any problems dealing with, uh, with the nuke. I think it does end up getting taken down by the stream of infested that uh, were there. Okay, this nuke seems to be going towards the expansion, I think. It's going towards Kerrigan's expansion. I think she wants to try and intercept this. Okay, and the mobilization wave comes down, takes out the nuke as well as stunning. That was actually a really good play here for Kerrigan. She jumps in, casts an immobilization wave, takes out the nuke, and also stuns a lot of the defenders here. So her hydralists are able to kind of get a two for one here. Uh, just by taking out that nuke and clearing out this area and freeing up this crystal. So that was actually a really good play. Two of these purifier beams now are really, really close together. And uh, when the purifier beams are are nearby, the amount of damage they deal uh, can uh, skyrocket exponentially. If you're not paying attention, uh, they can actually blindside you very, very quickly. So yeah, these two beams are now one beam. So you know, they are ending up splitting up a little bit, but... Uh, Okay, so we have this nuke over here, and this one is going to fly over Stukov's base, so it's going to get shot down very, very quickly. There are a lot of bunkers here, and they will have no problems making short work of the point defense missiles and the nuke itself. Because, uh, as I said earlier, they are hit scan attacks, so they're going to be fine. And Kerrigan is just going to be pushing over here, cleans up whatever defenders on this side of the crystal, and now there's an attack that has spawned here. I don't know if Kerrigan wants to deal... Okay, there. She's, uh, making a small, uh, she's taking a small detour. A bunch of void rays on this side, but uh, again, no problems for Kerrigan's uh, hydralists over here to deal with it. Simulation aura comes down as well to try and pick up some of the resources that she'll be losing. Mithil gets shot down out of the air on that side. Okay, we have another nuke here, and this will be uh, crossing Kerrigan's army. So I think if Kerrigan wants to, she can engage that. Uh, she does not seem to want to do that, but there's another attack wave as well that is spawning on that side, so let's see what Kerrigan's plan is. Okay, she wants to deal with that nuke first, I think. Okay, there we go. So she shoots down all the point defense missiles, cleans up that missile as well. So that nuke has been taken care of, and now the allies are, uh, are safe for a little while. The next pure fire beam has spawned, and that is at the 20, second, 20 minute mark. So there we go. Attack wave is making its way towards the uh, the expansion area over here. And again, there are a bunch of void rays and adepts. Uh, adepts can kind of shred the hydralisks really quickly. But not all of these hydralisks, though, unfortunately, are attacking. There's a nuke that gets targeted onto Kerrigan's army, but Kerrigan is paying attention, moves out of the way. A nuke falls and 
detonates on that side and uh, takes out nothing. This next missile seems that it is uh, going towards uh, towards the player base. But over here, you can see how the point defense missiles are actually shooting down the hydrolisk attacks. But uh, over here is an example of where numbers beats the uh, beats the attack type. So she just has so many uh, hydrolisks here that the point defense missiles kind of get overwhelmed, and she eventually takes out the uh, the nuke over there. But. Relatively decent play here from Kerrigan, minus one part where she can end up getting nuked there, but uh, it's basically the map awareness which, uh, which plays a role here. So again, she has a large number of Hydralisks now and they will end up shredding these uh, Phoenixes relatively easily. Adepts also has stand no match against uh, such a large army nuke. It comes down very very close for Kerrigan to get uh, really smoked by that, but uh, there's a disruptor shot here that lands on some of the hydralisks. The mobilization wave just a little bit too late there. Kerrigan does end up losing a few hydralisks in that exchange, but uh, overall Kerrigan's okay. She uh, she has a decent economy, and uh, she has uh, okay, that nuke is over here, but is going to get uh, caught by by the bunkers over here, so that's okay. Uh, two nukes drop down. Uh, it takes out a bit of Sukov's army. Uh, Kerrigan is just pushing into the side now and takes out the hybrid dominator on there. Uh, these crystals are now free to be picked up. We have a uh, few ultralux now being also added into the mix, uh, just to allow uh, allow something to have something to be there on the front line, and just make it a little easier. So we have Sukov's infested here now, pushing through and uh, trying to take out some of these disruptors. And we have two crystals on the way here, but they, uh, the two workers get caught out by the purifier beam, and the other two get caught out there as well, and this one gets caught out. We have three workers over here, they get... <laughs> Kerrigan expresses their, their, uh, their frustration, like, three of the workers got wrecked by that purifier beam, and now there are three crystals here. They really want to go and pick up these crystals before the lava starts spawning again, because uh, otherwise those are three crystals that will be gone permanently. So, uh, we have another uh, rally over there. We have another nuke that's making its way as well here, but I think it may just get caught up by the infested if he's taken out. Yeah, so there we go, that goes down. And these three drones are over here. And now one drone gets killed off as well, and this thing is gonna go down probably. Yep. And one manages to take the crystal away. There's still one more crystal left though. And it gets picked up by that SCV, and another one gets killed off there. The spirit fire beams are causing a lot of problems, but SCV picks it up. Will he sneak by? Yes, he sneaks by, and he ends up saving all those crystals. Really, really nice there. We have this one as well, this SCV being picked up. Uh, the drone is gonna get nuked. Nope, dodges the nuke as well. This drone is not a happy camper right now. This thing is getting chased by the purifier beam. There is a nuke that goes down and Kerrigan's army here. Uh, does end up Clipping a few of the Hydralisks, but now this drone is going to make its way back. And I think it's going to make its way back towards the Purifier Beam again, which uh, is... Uh, one of the unfortunate things is because the Infested are trickling through this side, the Purifier Beam will end up spawn camping this area and killing off the Infested. So it's going to be causing a lot of problems for the drones, and uh, anything that's trying to navigate its way back to the base. And we have an immobilization wave here, to just deal with this attack wave, you can see a lot of Tempests here. Kerrigan spots the nuke, moves out of the way, nuke comes down, and then Kerrigan's just gonna clean up whatever uh, is left of the Tempest on this side. But yeah, you can see these pure fire beams are just you know, focusing down these infested, this infested trickle, so... Any drone or any worker that's bringing crystals back will have to be actively microed around these pure fire beams. And one of the things that can kind of make it difficult is if they are on the ramp like this. Like if it sits in the middle of the ramp, it's very very difficult to maneuver around them. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Our allies are in combat. This nuke has spawned on this side now. Should be uh, should be more than enough for time for Kerrigan to address this if she wants to. Uh, and then we have also another attack with this coming up. This drone is making its way back, but there's a nice uh, little uh, spot for it to go through, so uh, it escapes with its life. This nuke is here, but I think it just missed... Okay, this infested has aggroed it. I think they'll take this nuke out. 
Okay, we can just go down here to uh, the infested that have spawned. Now Kyrgyz wants to go and deal with the bonus objective on this site, so the bonus objective will spawn as soon as the lava comes up. I think Kyrgyz should have no problems. I think there might be a fire breath that might uh, kill the Hydralisks if it gets its ability off. But uh, no, the Hydralisk with Frenzy deals a lot of damage there. See how quickly that bonus objective went out. And that is GG.